Today I'm in the kitchen with my daughter Mackenzie. <laughs> and she's going to show you how easy it is to make bread. We have all of our ingredients here. Flour, honey, uh, you can use sugar, we're going to use honey, yeast, yeast water, and ha, oil. And this recipe is from Making Bread as Easy as 1, 2, 3, 4 from uh, JustPeace.org. It's a recipe I got offline, of course, and I use it all the time. And this recipe calls for milk, but we found out when we didn't have milk, we could just use water. Okay, so we have a cup of warm water in the bowl, and she's going to go ahead and add a two tablespoons of honey to this water. Good, now stir it in to the water. You want the water to get um, mixed with the sugar or honey, whatever you're going to use. This is going to feed the yeast, make the yeast grow basically, so it'll become active. Okay. Now she's going to add active yeast. I bought this big pack of yeast. And I think I bought it at Winco, if I'm not mistaken. So she's going to add two tablespoons of yeast to this. And we're going to let this sit for five minutes. And it's going to get a little bubbly and start activating. We're going to get our flour ready. You're going to need... Um, three cups of flour to start and you know what if you want to add a dash of salt you can also do that. Make sure you have your oil ready and you're going to need three to four tablespoons of that. So we'll be back. Like a pinch? A dash, yeah like a pinch. <laughs> back with Mackenzie and we're going to finish making the first, uh, well the second step to making your bread basically. She's going to add a dash of salt to the mixture. And you can see it's already kind of bubbling over here. It's been five minutes. She set a timer. What a good cook. Mackenzie's going to add Mackenzie's going to add three cups of flour to this mixture. And you know what, honey? You might want to go grab a wooden spoon, too, once you add that first cup. Is this okay? Mm-hmm. Go get your wooden spoon so you can start mixing it in. <coughs> Those mm -hmm. You know what? We need to add our oil. So let's do that now. Should have added the oil before we added the flour. But that's okay. No big deal. We're going to add three tablespoons of vegetable oil. I, use, I like to cook with canola oil. I was in a hurry yesterday and this is the only oil that was <laughs> in my budget. So vegetable oil it is. Three tablespoons of that. Okay. And then start stirring your mixture. And at this point you could also add more sugar if you were doing sugar. It's actually supposed to be three tablespoons total of sugar. We're just gonna do it stick with the two, honey. Get it going here. that and then we're going to add another cup of liquid if you're going to add milk at this point you can add the milk or you can add water which is what Candy's going to do she's mm -hmm. going to add another cup of water yes because you're going to add more flour and there won't be enough liquid in there <laughs> My kids don't like coming in the kitchen with me because I'm a perfectionist and I get real pissy, especially when I'm doing something that I expect them to know how to do all these things, and of course they don't. I'm going to add another cup of flour. Yeah, you're going to add another cup of flour. So they end up leaving the kitchen, which isn't good. I want them to enjoy cooking. And I, ha I hate when I get in perfectionist mode. It should be fun, and food should be... Something kids know how to cook. We were talking about going to the drive-in and, you know, going to get a pizza, cheeseburgers or something, and then I was like, 
uh, reading about food revolution and <laughs> saw the documentary Forks Over Knives. But yeah, no, we'll make our own stuff. We can go get sandwiches. That's what the spread's for. We're making a spread so we can have sandwich rolls so we can build our own sandwiches to take to the drive-in tonight. How do you build a sandwich? How do you build it? <laughs> you get all the ingredients and put it together. And you stir this 50 times in each direction. I fudge it usually and, you know, I don't even count. I just stir it till it's mixed, pretty much. Should be like a big gooey mass, which is what it is. Okay, turn around and go the opposite direction. There you go. If you have a bread machine, you are missing out. If you're dumping all your stuff into a bread machine, you're missing out on all the fun you could have with your kid, watching them work really hard to make this dough. <laughs> um, but it's fun. It's fun that kids, kids should be in the kitchen. Like I said earlier, they should enjoy their food. Know how to prepare it. Know where it comes from. Okay. Now add three to four more cups of flour. It's really at this point you want, are looking to form a nice big ball of dough so that you can let it set and rest. Is there enough flour? Yeah, there's enough flour in there. I have another bag. No worries. I would have said let's make bread if we didn't have everything. So she's going to add some more flour to that, and we'll come back to you and show you what it's supposed to look like. Okay, Kenzie's added. How many cups of flour have we added? Two. Two? Okay. And I think you can probably add one more cup and then work it with your hands so you see how it, how it looks now. Let's add another cup and we'll come back and show you how that looks. Here we are with our ball of dough. And Kenzie's going to add just a little tiny drop of oil to the pan or the bowl that the bread was made in. Just a little bit. Tell me when. When. And she's going to rub that oil all over the sides of the pan. With my hand? Huh. Sides of the bowl, yes. So that it coats the bowl so the bread, when the bread rises, it doesn't stick. <clears throat> and our dough is a little bit sticky. Maybe high humidity today. That's okay. We're going to let it rise that way and then we'll uh, knead it and the flour will. Uh, have a better consistency. We needed this dough for about five minutes, and we're going to let it, like I said, rise to a rise. We're going to place the bread into the bowl. Oh, And we're going to cover it with a kitchen towel. Take your baby over to the stove because I have the stove preheating right now. So since this is a nice old stove, it doesn't need a lot. It doesn't have a lot of um, insulation. We're going to just set it on top of the burner where there's pan. and let it rise. Okay, we're back from our little shopping trip, and here's the bread. It's doubled in size. So Kenzie, you're going to punch it down in the middle and take it out of the bowl. Yeah, you actually punch it. Like oh. Yeah. Let it deflate and gather up the dough. It's probably going to be a little bit sticky. And get it onto a floured surface. So we're going to add a little bit of flour here for Ken to be able to knead this dough. Put it down. Put it down. And kneading, you should knead it for... Oh, I don't know. I only need mine for maybe 10 minutes. I'm not... I don't follow directions exactly to the T, and it seems to be like my stuff comes out okay, so. And with this instant yeast, um, you don't have to let it rise again. The recipe says to let your bread rise for an hour and then uh, again for 30 minutes. What I'm going to do is shape my loaves in about two minutes here and put them on the pan, and they're going to rise on the pan before I bake them. And they rise for about 15, 20 minutes. OK. 
Okay, we'll come back to you when we have the loaf split up. Okay, we're, we already divided the dough into two sections. This should give you two loaves, or usually I get five or six um, rolls or hamburger buns that I make. And we're going to do a, a longer, like a French bread loaf, sweet bread loaf, to make a uh, French bread pizza this week. So Kenzie's going to roll that out. And you just roll it out and shape it to an oblong, you know, like a sub. Don't be so hard on it. Just do it gently. <laughs> Here, let me show you what to do. You see how I'm barely laying my hands on it and it and moving it along so it stretches out the bread? Mm-hmm. And that's the size you want right there. Make sure it's even all the way through. The same size. Trying to help Kenzie. She was really beating the bread up. <laughs> so now I'm going to have her put some um, cornmeal. Sprinkle some cornmeal onto my baking sheet so we can transfer the French roll. A little bit more on this side. And what this cornmeal does is it prevents the bread from sticking to the baking sheet. So we'll take the baking sheet over there to make the transfer easy. Move this flour out of the way. I just want to lift that up. Put it on the stand. And just believe this or not, this is going to double in size probably. And I tried to make it pretty uniform. It's not 100% perfect. That's the beauty in making your own bread. Who cares? It's going to be good. You're going to eat it. You can get fancy and cut slits on top or, can I? you know, things like that. You might want to use one of those really sharp, little knives at an angle. You know, how to just barely go in and cut it. Like, like that or like that? Oh, okay. Little flash marks down the length of the bread. I don't put egg whites or any of that crap on my bread. I, I might sprinkle cornmeal on top for you know sesame seeds if you want sesame seeds, but we're just going to do it as is. And then we're going to make our sandwich rolls. We'll be back. Both the rolls that we shaped and put on the pan. We've got four um, sandwich rolls and one large loaf of bread that we're going to use this week for a piece of bread. And then we have a small one here that just kind of got left off to the side. But it'll be okay. We'll bake them too. So that'll be our that'll be our test bread. <laughs> um, we dusted it with flour to give it a rustic look. The bread has doubled in size basically, and you can see how nice it looks. It's ready to go in the oven. We're going to bake it at 425 degrees for about 25 minutes tops. I'm going to check my rolls sooner just because they're smaller in size. So we'll show you the finished product. Okay. Oh, pretty. This is after 15 minutes. And my rolls look like they're where I want them to be. My loaf is almost done, too. Give it a few more minutes here. I'm going to pull out the rolls. Okay. This is my little mini roll, my tester that we had left over. Here are the rolls that we're going to make sandwiches on. We're supposed to go to the drive-in, but I don't know about it, girls. But let's show you what this looks like inside. Nice and fluffy. And good. One piece? <laughs> Is it good? The best bread you can... Eat this homemade bread. So I encourage you guys to make your own bread. Fine, get your kids involved. They'll like it.